Well, welcome to How the Light Gets In and to um, this debate, The Key to Progress. Science was the vehicle of progress and the solution to the world's ills, the bedrock of the philosophy of the modern West, um, but the halo of science has somewhat slipped. And science is now seen by some, at least, as potentially a malevolent force, um, a tool of the military industrial complex, a damaging exploiter of natural resources, um, an ideology masquerading as a single source of objective truth. Um, should we welcome this shift in our perception of science as the end of an unquestioning and naive belief in a false god? Or is it a, a dangerous and potentially disastrous slide into prejudice and superstition uh, that will in the end leave us all poorer, less safe and less in control of our lives? To help us discuss this, I have um, three speakers. We have Henry G. He's a recovering paleontologist, an evolutionary biologist, science fiction writer, and is currently the senior editor of Nature, the internationally acclaimed science magazine. Uh, we also have Ganesh Taylor. Um, she's a scientist at the Francis Crick Institute, uh, where her research is predominantly focused on the genetic formation of ovaries and testes, and does most of her work on chickens. And Philip Goff. Um, he's a philosopher of consciousness at Durham University, um, a stern critic of materialism and a defender of the um, once rather exotic and now increasingly interesting panpsychism. So should we question the dominance of science and its ability to solve all the world's ills? Henry, would you, would you start us off? Sure. Science is not magic or any way strange or inaccessible. Really, it's just the formal application of common sense to um, the phenomena one sees in the world. Um, lately, though, and I mean lately in certainly since I've been at Nature in the past 30 years ago, there, uh, 30 years or so, there has been a problem in which um, science is both revered by the public, people in white coats, mostly men, are seen as kind of like Gandalf. Uh, uh, they have occult knowledge that they can um, impart to the world. But on the other, other hand, because of this kind of priestly quality, uh, science are, scientists are seen as suspicious or even feared. Um, the uh, Committee of the Public Understanding of Science, set up by the Royal Society, oodles of years ago tried to um, rectify this and I think they um, missed a trick. They proposed a top-down approach in which the public was uh, the great unwashed public had to receive as if from on high the facts that you the public should know without question and of course that only reinforced the idea that um, scientists were of some inaccessible uh, godlike status when really science actually begins in childhood as naive curiosity what happens if i poke something with this big stick or not um, so science should come from beneath um, it shouldn't be dictated as a top-down uh, um, activity. Um, so really, I think the, the solution to this is science should present itself as entirely humble before the evidence. Science does not have all the answers. We scientists invite you to participate in helping us understand the world a little bit more than we do, and that any, any fool any body, any child is perfectly entitled to ask a question. There is no such thing as a silly question. There is no such thing as authority. Um, and I think once science um, is or has a more humble, open approach, I think this dichotomy that we have seen and which you alluded to um, will probably fade away. But the scientists themselves uh, you know, Richard Dawkins, the public understanding of science, that strain has not done itself any favours. Thank you, Henry. Finished? I would suggest that to question is part of the scientific method, and therefore everybody should always question the dominance of science and also question its ability to solve the world's ills. 
However, uh, I would suggest that um, the scientific method is about posing a question, looking for evidence, um, finding an answer for which you believe at least most of the evidence um, is in keeping. In this case, I would suggest that science um, is just a vehicle. So does it innately make life worse? Absolutely not. Um, I think that it is a tool that we use to do with which as we see fit. And so I would say that um, the top-down approach that Henry alluded to is actually um, the reason why society might have gotten a little bit frustrated with science, because a top-down approach of delivering facts implies somehow that um, facts are fixed. The word fact, in fact, does that, doesn't it? Um, whereas, in fact, what, what, what a scientist says when they make a statement is, judging from the evidence that we've assessed, this is very, very likely to be the outcome that we, uh, you know, think is, is the answer to the question that we had. So um, what I'm basically trying to say is, I think people should actually adopt the scientific method more in their lives. Um, and that it is absolutely uh, viable for everybody and should be encouraged um, to, to everyone. And I think calling it the scientific method actually can be quite alienating. Um, so exactly as Henry says, it's just common sense. It's just a way of thinking about things. Um, and I, I think that, you know, I think that we need to, as human beings, take a little bit of responsibility for what we've done. And, and, and rather than looking at science and going, well, terrible things have happened to the world and the, the climate is being ruined by science and all that sort of thing, maybe you think science doesn't do things on its own. That's not how it works. Humans do things with human knowledge. Humans uncover knowledge because they want to find answers to things and, and uh, solutions to problems. And uh, I think that we should maybe consider carefully which, uh, which questions we would like to uh, you know, focus our human minds and the sort of scientific method onto. That's what I'd say. Thank you. Philip, over to you. Yeah, so I think the success of science over the, over the last 400 years has, is truly mind-blowing, both in terms of its capacity to explain so much of the universe we live in and also in terms of the incredible technology it's produced that has transformed the planet we live on. What lessons should we draw from that success? One very common reaction is scientism. So according to scientism, what we should learn from this great success is that science is the only path to knowledge, the only source of truth, and everything else is just superstitious nonsense. I draw a slightly different lesson from this. I believe that the reason science has been so successful is because since Galileo, it's focused on a quite narrow, focused task, roughly accounting for publicly observable data. And it's excelled in that task. The problem is, I, however, I think there are things we know to be real which are not known on the basis of public observation. And I'll give you two quick examples. The first is consciousness. Consciousness is not publicly observable. You can't look inside somebody's head and see their feelings and experiences. Uh, you know, the feel consciousness is known about not on the basis of observation and experiment, but on the basis of our immediate awareness of our own feelings and experiences. So this is something we know to be real, but is not known about on the basis of observation and experiment. The philosopher Daniel Dennett is, is wonderfully consistent on this. This is why he doesn't believe in consciousness. Second example are the entities mathem mathematicians deal with. Abstract objects like numbers, sets, mathematical functions. These abstract objects have no place in the spatio-temporal realm that science studies. They are eternal, timeless objects. They're known about not through observation experiment, but through mathematical intuition. So again, we've got some entities that we know to be real, I would argue, but are not known about on the basis of observation and experiment. I think we're currently going for a phase of history that will be looked back upon as a time when we were quite understandably completely blown away by the success of physical science. But I think that's led us to forget about the importance of philosophy. 
The job of philosophy, in my view, is to bring together what we know from science, from observation experiment, but also things we know about in other ways, consciousness, abstract objects, and to synthesize this together in a single unified worldview. So science is wonderful, we should all have respect for it, but it's not the full story. Thank you. Um, which rather neatly brings us, I suppose, to, to the, the first sort of topic. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.